Hi, Dr. Fritz Sutter here. Today we're going to talk about calories. What are they? We count them, we fret over them, sometimes we think we hate them, but really what are they? It's really a measure of energy, and we need energy to fuel our bodies. Technically, a calorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So now that you have that figured out, what does it mean for you as you dive into that double cheese pizza or large mocha with whipped cream? Well, we all require energy to function. However, the amount of energy or calories that we need varies individually and sometimes very greatly from day to day. They depend on variables such as age, sex, activity level, and more importantly, resting metabolic rate. Well, what is this RMR? It refers to the number of calories your body burns at rest every 24 hours. That's without any activity whatsoever. This does not include the calories you burn with other activities, even sometimes mental activities that, bend, that do tend to burn some extra calories as well. So the easy way to estimate your RMR, resting metabolic rate, is to multiply your weight by 10. So for example, a 180 pound person would need at least 1800 calories per day to maintain their weight, probably more depending on their activity level. A much more accurate way can be determined by using certain kinds of body composition analysis which are available through some medical offices and gyms. If you eat fewer calories than your RMR, you may initially lose weight. However, if you eat too few calories or a very low calorie diet, your body can respond by ramping down your metabolic rate as a protective medicine, um, a protective mechanism against starvation. This is especially true if your calories are not coming from the right sources. So all calories are then not created equal. For example, a 400 calorie breakfast composed of a large donut along with a large coffee will be rapidly digested, spiking your blood sugar and rising quickly followed by another surge of insulin in order to control that uh, blood sugar in your body, particularly your brain, and then you'll have a blood sugar crash. This makes you tired, fatigued, brain fog, sometimes muscle aches, and then your body is hungry for more sugar, setting off a vicious cycle of blood sugar peaks and crashes. Also, that donut and coffee contain virtually no protein of any quality, which is what your body needs and looks for first thing in the morning, and actually governs your body's metabolic rate for the day through the thyroid mechanism. This is a recipe for a declining muscle mass, a declining resting metabolic rate, which leads to fat gain. So let's go back to this breakfast. This time you'll be having quality calories, two large eggs cooked on a bed of spinach and served over fresh berries. Go ahead and have your coffee, but one mug, not an entire pot. The eggs serve as a full quality protein source, which helps to conserve your muscle. The berries and spinach provide fiber, which along with the protein from the eggs, acts as a break on the rate at which you will absorb the carbohydrates or sugar from your spinach and berries, which presents which prevents a big rise in blood sugar. You'll be unlikely to experience that mid-morning slump is almost guaranteed with the donut breakfast. So the best policy is to avoid empty calories in processed and sweetened foods and load up on the real whole foods that are what we call nutrient dense. These tend to be much lower in calories while providing lots of vitamins, minerals, and fibers. Thanks for listening.